All right. In this video, we're going to go ahead and create the rock or earth base for our game. And we're going to start out by making another 1024 by 1024 transparent layer. And we're going to click a new layer. And we could do this, really this next thing, we could do this whole thing on one layer. Uh, but just in case we want to fiddle later, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, I'm going to go ahead and make a layer above it. So I've picked a nice light brown and a corresponding darker brown. I'm going to come up to Filter. I'm going to Render Clouds. And basically we're doing the same thing we did for our mountains. There's going to be a couple other things we do to make this work, but we're starting out the same way. Going to go to our filter gallery. Going to choose our stained glass under texture again. And for self size, I'm up around 47. I thickened the border to up to about 11. Still no light intensity. It's really all up to you where you want to do this at and what looks good to you. But we're going to run with that for now. Now, this is where we can either stop. Or if you're really picky, we can go on and do something. If you want the kind of old school block look, you're pretty much good to go right here. As you can see, the uh, separations that we have between our stones also border this entire square. So we have a block, and if you want to go that route, that's great. However, if you should be nitpicky and you want all your ground that you put together to tile, we've got a little bit more work to do and I'll show you what I mean. Since we made a 1024 I'm gonna double that up and make a 2048 and if we come back here I'm gonna click control A to select everything control C to copy it then over here control V to paste it. With my move tool on I'm gonna snap that down to the corner I'm going to hold down Alt and Shift with my Move tool on. That will allow me to drag a copy directly over. I'm going to hit Control e to collapse that down and Alt Shift again. And you see you get your blocks that you can stack, but they're outlined. Like I said, if you want to go old school, you're fine right here. We're going to get rid of this for now. If you don't, if you want to be able to tile this and make it look like one continuous piece of ground, we've got a little bit more work to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this border all the way around because that's going to give us trouble later if we don't. So I'm going to hit Control T. I'm going to come up to a corner, hold down Shift so it scales evenly. I'm going to drag this up a little bit. Doesn't matter at all how much really and I'm just going to center that. I'm going to hit enter so our border is gone. However, Photoshop remembers that this picture is still here and bigger than the size of our canvas. and We have to get rid of that. So I'm going to come up here and pick my crop tool and you see it outlines all the way around and I'm going to hit enter. And it says is that the area you want? I'm going to hit enter again to say yes. And now we've gotten rid of those trimmings, and that's what we want to do. So now that we've got that crop tool taken care of, we're going to come up to Filter again. We're going to come down to Other, and then all the way down to Offset. And we're going to make sure that we have half of the size of our canvas, in this case 512, in both the horizontal and the vertical. And we're going to make sure we have Wraparound selected. Make sure Preview is checked and then you can see what happens. I'm going to click OK and we end up with this. Now, the reason we enlarge this and cut this off is because right now, having done this, if we had just left it the way it was without cropping, not only would we have these seams, but we'd actually have these white lines. And then we would have to fix every single little pixel of these lines. Since we did it this way, there's going to be a little bit easier solution to this. So I'm going to select my brush tool, and I'm going to make it a hard round. And in my case, it's about 9, but I'm going to make it about the size 
of my lines on my canvas. I'm going to hold down Alt, which will allow me to select that color, put it right on those lines, and now I've color matched it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start finishing off these lines. So I'm going to click here, and I'm just going to click, and then I'm going to go up to where I want that line to end. I'm going to hold down Shift and then click again. And that's going to make a line where I want it to go. And in this case, we're going to run into some weird stuff here. You'll see how we take care of everything as we move along. It's going to take a little bit of work. But I'm going to start right here, I think. Maybe offset that just a little. In fact, what I might do, I'm going to try and get away with this. I'm going to try and click right on the edge of that. And then put the mouse right on the opposite edge of that. And see if I manage to just get that out of there. And then I'm going to kind of do the same thing here. And I think we're going to get away with that all right. And then I think here I'm just going to take this over. Which is a little bit bizarre, but that's okay. Down here I'm going to go right up to here. And I think I'll go right from there to there. Here. Right to that. There, right to that. This one I actually think I'm going to move it right along that line. And I'm going to do the same here. As you can see we had this little bit of edge here. And actually that's going to allow me to do the same thing over here. And I think we'll go from here to here. And maybe from here, not quite to that edge, and we've pretty well cleaned up our line work. Now we just have to fix some of this color. So we're going to go in, and we're going to select our magic wand, and we're going to make sure that anti-alias and contiguous are checked, and I'm going to come in and I'm just going to select one of these zones. I'm going to pick the color off that that I like, and looking at the colors around it, I kind of like this medium brown. So I'm going to hit G to go to my paint bucket tool, hold down Alt so that I can select that color, and then I'm just going to fill that in. Then I'm going to keep working back and forth, and I'm going to select this, select uh, paint bucket, select that peek that in. And we're going to select down here, hit G, Alt, and then fill it. And because this one's going to touch up here, we're going to do, we're going to leave it the color that we just selected. We're going to select this tiny little bit, go right back to G and fill that so it matches. And we're going to keep working our way around this. Now let's see what's another here we're getting uh so we're gonna hold down shift and grab that basically add those two together to get one selection. I'm gonna select my color. I'm not sure if I like either one of these perfectly. I might select this one. And I might just change it up a little bit because these are so similar. And I might go like a little more orangey over here. Fill all that in. And that might be more than I like. Maybe a little less saturated. Yeah, that'll work. And let's see, we will uh, do this one. And I think we'll use this medium color here. So 
you can see this is just it's kind of a work it out as you go sort of thing I am not sure that that and that are the same color so I'm going to select that I'm going to color sample here just hit that just to be sure they might have been but it's hard to tell but I think we're in pretty good shape but we have to find out if we're in pretty good shape so we've got this done now we're gonna hit control A control C just like we did before control V oops didn't want to color that grab our move tool snap this down to the corner alt plus shift with our move tool on drag over a copy snap it together I'm going to hit control E just to run those two together and then alt shift again and look at that we're tiling pretty good so we're set if we want to do a tiling texture that way then we've gotten there with that and we can save that out and now the other thing I was going to talk about is uh, if you're creating your levels for your scroller for your 2d game and if for any reason you want something that's not an entire block size you know maybe you want a half block then we can save this one out which we're gonna do right now we'll save that we're gonna save it as a targa just cuz I like targas and we're going to call this Earth. We will save 32 bits. We don't really, actually, we can do 24 on this one. That's fine. But now let's say you want like a half block. Well, then we're going to, first thing we're going to do is make sure we get exactly a half block. And we're going to go from Edit to Preferences, Grids, Guides, and Slices. We're going to come down to our grid, and we have this thing over here that says grid line every whatever it's set to. Now we're using 1024, so half of that is 512. And we want to make sure it's pixels. And we don't care about subdivisions because we don't want to do too much with this. And nothing seems to happen, but that's because we don't have our grids turned on. So I'm going to hit Control. And uh, the little, uh, oh great, now I can't think of it. The quotation marks, control quotation marks. And you'll see our grid pops up. So now we have something to snap to. So we're going to come back over here to our marquee, marquee selection, and we're going to make sure we're on rectangular. And then up here at top, I'm just going to grab this and snap right to that grid. And I'm just going to hit delete. Control D to deselect that. We can hit Control quotation marks to turn our grid back off if we want. And I'm going to go to File, Save As, switch it over to a Targa, and we can call it, say, Earth Half if we want. And we're all set. I'm going to make that 32 bits, save, and we've got our earth done. Alright, the thing we're going to look at in the next video is how to create some grass for the tops of our earth, and also some grass for just placing around our level for a little bit of added effect. I'll see you in that video.